couple of things. Number one, well, now you're probably going to understand why I'm saying this. <laughs> okay. Because the church as a whole spends most of its time in the world, even though we're in the world, not to be of the world, everybody knows that. But because we spend so much time in the world, that is kind of like standing on a, next to a dusty road. You might not be part of the road, but if cars go by, you're going to get dirty. Why? Because dust comes on you as the cars go by. It's the same thing. When you're in the world and you spend most of your time in the world, and I'm not talking about just being at work. I'm talking about engaging with the world and talking about things the way the world talks about things and all that stuff. Then guess what? You're getting dirty. And that dust is getting on you. And now the problem is whenever you come to church, you bring that dust with you, right? Which, which is a mindset. And the mindset of the world is now part of the mindset of the church. And we judge things we hear in church based on how we understand things in the world rather than it being the opposite way around. Right? Are you with me so far? Pretty simple, right? Now, because of that, and you'll see, it's amazing. You can notice how the church is going. And if you want to know how the church is usually going, I'm talking about the body of Christ as a whole. Okay, I'm not talking about individual pockets of the body of Christ, like a local individual church. But if you want to know how the church itself is doing, the body of Christ, really all you have to do is look at the world around it. And what you see in the world around it, that's what you find in the church. Same mentality, same mindsets. Let me give you an example. The predominant mindset in the church today is that of a victim. Why? Because that's a predominant mindset in the world. Everybody's a victim. Now, if everybody's a victim, I'd like to know who the victors are that's making the victims victims. You see, there has to be a victor to be a victim. You understand that? And so, but the problem is now, in the world, everybody's a victim. Everybody's a victim. Well, guess what? Uh, it's because you're part of the Adamic family. His family was dysfunctional. And if you have not come out of his family, you're still dysfunctional. Isn't that simple? You look at Adam's family, it was pretty messed up. I'm not talking about the TV show. Okay? <laughs> I grew up in that era. I remember that. Okay, so, But I'm talking about Adam, right? Had sons. One kills the other. His wife had an eating disorder. I mean, you think about it. She ate him out of house and home. Okay, we're here. All right. Now, okay. Okay. Just felt like y'all thought I was being too serious there for a minute. Huh? Had to help lighten it up a little bit. So. But you have to understand, the whole idea of the world is... See, the minute you decide to be a victim, the, one of the reasons you do that is so that you can take any responsibility off of yourself and you can push it on somebody else. Now you don't have to achieve anything. You don't have to strive for anything. You don't have to have any ambition, any goals, any drive, uh, any initiative. You don't have to do anything. Why? Because you got somebody that's putting you down. And that's, that's the state of the world. Now, the church is almost the same thing in the sense that it also has a victim mentality. And it's talking about, well, this person doesn't like me. Well, who cares? Even the person you're telling that to doesn't care. <laughs> okay? Let's just be honest, all right? And they're just waiting for you to shut up so they can tell you how bad people have been to them. They're not even listening to what you say, Right? And so you have to realize everybody's got this victim mentality, which is exactly the opposite of a Bible mentality. Because everything in the Bible is about being a victor, not being a victim. Amen? Because my Bible says, and I don't know, if yours doesn't say it, you need to get rid of that one and get another one. But my Bible says that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Isn't that right? My Bible says that it is my faith that overcomes the world. Amen? So everything in the Bible is about overcoming, victory, all of that. Now, that does not preclude suffering. But you can overcome in suffering. But see, we don't do that in the church anymore. Nowadays, it's all a, you know, well, come down front. you got a broken heart. You've got this. You've got hurt emotions. You need some inner healing. None of which is talked about in the Bible. 
Why? You want to get inner healed? Get born again. The minute you get born again, you got inner healed. And you say, but, but I still feel this way. And that's because you're still thinking about the past. You can't, listen, you can't read the Bible and think about your future and still talk about how things used to be. Yeah. You will either live in the past or in the future. One of the two, right? Now, we could say, well, you could live in the now. Well, the now is you thinking about the past or the future. That's the problem. And so we have to realize that with faith, everything can be overcome. 